That's his vice, is to lie. Let's see. Revelations chapter 12 and verse 4. Revelations 12 and 4. Revelation, or Hazon, chapter 12, verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of Shamaim. So his tail, what does it mean by the tail? His tail drew third part of the stars. Anybody? Huh. We're going to hold on to that for a second. So it says, and his tail drew a third part of the stars of Shamaim. Read. And they cast him to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. Which was ready to be delivered. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. Let's see what these stars are. And there was war in Shamaim. Michael and his Malachim fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his Malachim. So and right here we see that the stars are quote unquote what? They're angels, right? But in verse 4 it says, His tail drew a third part of the stars from heaven. Cast them down to the ground. So, if he deceived the angels and got them kicked out, how easy is it to get a man? trying to get at the righteous ones, especially them. So again, the Messiah is the walking law. Satan is the walking lie. Opposites, right? The walking Torah, which is the truth, and you have the walking lie. That's why it says he walked to and fro, up and down. That's his thing. All keep doing it. Let's go back to Ezekiel 28. We're going to find out what the tail means in a minute. Ezekiel 28 and 16. <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 16. By the multitude of your merchandise. By the what? By the multitude of your merchandise. So it says merchandise in here. Let's see. We're going to go into this word. That's from the Hebrew word. 87404. This it. Okay, go ahead. It's the word Rakula. It means merchandise. Traffic or trade. Merchandise, traffic, or trade. Alright? Keep this definition in mind. Hold what we got and let's go to Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 9. And you are men that carry tails. And you are what? And you are men that carry tails to shed blood. In you, what does traffic mean? To sell. Sell. And also, trade. To move. Right? So it says in verse 7, in you. That's not that tails, though, y'all. No, this ain't that. That's not that tails. This ain't that. Those tails is lies. You know, like when you tell a tale. That's a lie. Exactly. So it says, and you are men that carry tails. Let's look that up. H 7400 come from the same root word as the other one we cut in, in Ezekiel. It means to slander. Slander. Tail bearer. Informer. Right? Let's see what this means. Because wasn't he slandering the most high in the garden? Yeah. Lying on him, right? Let's get Ezekiel. I mean, uh, 
Leviticus 19 and verse 16. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 16 You shall not go up and down as a talebearer among what? my people You shall what? You shall not go up and down as a talebearer among my people You shall not go up and down as a talebearer Let's see what talebearer comes out The same thing to slander Slander, talebearer, informer. So the whole thing, he was walking back and forth selling what? Wolf selling lies. Lies. That's a good tip. Whole thing, walking up and down, back and forth, selling lies, peddling lies. It worked all the way from the beginning, and it's still working right now. But right now, we in this room, we ain't ignorant to his devices, because we see it. Right? Mm -hmm. Go back to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. Revelation or Hazon chapter 12, verse 3. And there appeared, appeared another wonder in Shamaim. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, seven crowns upon his head, and his tail drew the third part of the stars from Shamaim. So his tail drew a third part of the stars from Shamaim. Let's find out what the tail does. Now, one more time. What is Satan's device? Lies, right? Give me Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 15. Don't, don't, don't. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 15. The ancient and honorable. He is the head. He is the what? The head. He is the head. And what? And the prophet that teach lies is the tail. The prophet that teach lies is what? The tail. Is the tail. So the whole time he was walking around prophesying, telling lies to the angels. So deceptive that he even got the angels kicked out. He told Eve what? You shall surely not die. In the day that you eat thereof, you're going to be like the Most High. Your eyes going to be open. Prophesying lies to her. The whole time. All lies. He, he holding something back from you. He, don't, he just don't want you to be like him. He don't want you to be as great as him. She ate it up. And she ate it up. She ate the lies up. He used her five senses to get her. She ate the lies up. Because she wanted to be like the most high. Just like Satan wanted to be like the most high. Give me John 8 and 44. So, Yah did not create a devil. He created a perfect being. Perfect in wisdom and beauty the whole nine. But his heart... Got him lifted up. Then he became a devil and he started lying. So now you're going to look at a liar in a whole different light. It ain't a light thing. Because that's his main device is the lie. John 8 and 44. John or Yehuchanan chapter 8 verse 44. You are of your father the devil. You are who? You are of your father the devil. Go ahead. And the lust of your father you will do. And the what? The lust of your father you will do. She saw that it was good for food. Start lusting after it. Read. 
He was a murderer from the beginning. He was what? A murderer from the beginning. From what time? From the beginning. From the beginning. From Genesis. Read. And abode not in the truth. And abode what? Not in the truth. And abode not in the truth. Because he was the, the cherub that cover of the commandments. Read. Because there is no truth in him. When he speak a lie, he speak of his own. He do what? When he speak a lie, he speak of his own. When he speak a lie, he speaks on his own. Because the Most High did not create him to be this. His own heart drove him to be this. Read. For he is a liar and the father of it. Liar and the father of it. Very first. Ezekiel 28 and 18. Let's see his faith. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 18. You have defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities. By the iniquity of your traffic. By the iniquity of your traffic. Going back and forth lying. Go ahead. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of you. It shall devour you. And I will bring you bring you to ashes upon the earth. In the sight of all them that behold you. Go ahead. And all they that know you. Excuse me y'all. And all, and all they that know you among the people shall be astonished. And you shall be a terror, and never shall you be any more. So since he did all of this, what he did, this is his final fate. And everybody that follow him, from the Malachines in the heavens, they got this same fate. And everybody that's down here that follow his lies, you got the same thing. So with that, we say shalom. Good food right there. What well, might be saying? Might be saying, uh, t touch a neighbor and say you learned something. <laughs> Go ahead. No, nah, not right now. Cause they, they remember he out, they out doing the thing with him. You know what I'm saying? They out here getting it in just like him. Cause they got got. Just like Eve, when she got got, what did she do? She went and got her husband. So the Malachine that got got. Man, everybody get it. You know what I'm saying? So it's safe to say that the most I created the tools in place to make the devil, but it's really us that creates the devil. You put the choice there. Again, no robot. I'm going to tell you, don't touch that plug. If you touch that plug, you're going to die. I'm telling you before you do it, and I'm telling you it's not a good thing that you do it. Now, if you go and touch the plug, that's on you. So it's like he ain't made, he, he made evil, but he didn't make anything evil. And when we go to this tree of uh, good and evil, because to learn how to do something, you got to know how to do good and evil. Because if you don't know how to do something, you got to know what it is, and it's good for him anywhere to us, the tree of good and evil. So it's like, when we go to that tree and tell us not to, that's when we go to creating evil creations. So it's man that creates evil creations. The most high creates <laughs> good creations. And we can just follow it as he gave it to us. He when created we create our own thing, that's when we create devils and he, devilish. He created works. evil and darkness and all that. But he gave everybody choice. Before Cain did what he did, what did he say to him? Put the choices right here. Perform them. If you do good, and if you do evil, sin, lie up at the door and wait for you. Gave everybody the choice. So ain't no force again. And he let you know up front. Don't do this. This is not going to be good for you. But again, you feel like something is missing from you. So that destroys the myth. This lesson actually destroys the myth of people saying, well, he fair to all a man, but the angels actually got it worse than us because look at the angels like Hashatan. He just made him 
to be an adversary already, and he gonna get destroyed. He never had no choice. But not a big thing. Well, then why are you doing it like that? No. Nope. Before you know it, you're gonna sympathize with Nasha time and you were Satanist or something. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So this really does destroy that myth. Like, oh, he. Matter of fact, we was talking about this. Like, he couldn't even had that name originally. If he, if, if you think about what his role was and stuff, he wouldn't have been named the adversary or the deceiver. You know what I'm saying? Which always kind of led me to the understanding that his name had to be Lucifer in the first place. Yeah. He I wasn't able to go to that part of Ezekiel. He so, wasn't none of those things. He became that after he made his choice. Because Lucifer put him Lucifer in the library. That's what he was doing. He was there. Where are you coming? The, the, the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. What was that side of the Ark of the Covenant? The commandment. Who was that? Mozart, I see him. What did he do? The light. Exactly. That's what he said. He said, I'm going to make a fire come from the mystery. He was in between. She was in between the cup and the chair. Exactly. I'm going to fire. I'm going to fire. You know? Yeah. Any, any more questions? Something y'all didn't get or something? Watch this. Get get uh get Gen go back to Genesis uh two. Genesis two. Get where he uh where he told Adam not to uh eat from the tree. Right. We going to Genesis chapter two and verse sixteen. It says, "And Yahuwah Elohim." Commanded the man saying He did what? Commanded the man saying He wait wait he commanded the man doing what? Saying two and sixteen of every tree of the garden you may as freely eat. Now I, what we what I'm going here to show you is it you'll have these uh the, these people who philosophize, sociologists, right? One of the things was well when Mo when, uh, Moses went up to the mountain, um how you know he didn't give his own commandments for you to follow instead of the most highs, right? So read that again. Verse 16. And Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man, saying... What did he do just now? He commanded the man, saying... But what was the action that he just did? He said. He told him something. Right? So Eve came later. Go to what Eve said. Chapter 3 and verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Wait, wait, go back to the verse before that. Okay, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahuwah Elohim had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? What is she asking? Did Elohim do what? Say it. Right? Did he say this? What she said? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim have said, Ye shall not eat of it, uh -huh. neither shall ye touch it. So what so the part that she said that he said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, right? She added to it, right? How did the most high fix this problem with man? Because she, she just lied on the most high. Right? How did he fix this problem? How did he fix? The only, if, if, if it was just you walking up to her and asking her, you would have been under the impression that you can't touch it. But he didn't say that. Right? So she technically lied first because the serpent just asked the question. He didn't, she had the first lie. So if somebody asks you right now, Somebody asks you right now, what's the Ten Commandments? Can you add to it? Why can't we add to the commandments right now like they did? Say it again. Because he wrote it. Go to Exodus 31, 18. Exodus 31, 18. He said it. He said it. 
this time, ain't no lying on his commandments. Ain't no saying he said this, he did that, he, he told us. Exodus 31, 18. Exodus chapter 31 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. And I will surely hide my face. Oh, my bad, I'm in the wrong spot. One moment. Read verse, uh, read verse 17 first. Exodus 31 and verse 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. So it's talking about the Shabbat. Go ahead. For in six days, Yahuwah made Shamaim and Erech. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. Uh -huh. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon the Mount Sinai. Two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of Elohim. I'm not telling you nothing this time. He's not even given the option for you to go back and say, oh yeah, what well he said, such and such. You don't get that option no more. So he wrote it. So, And in stone. In stone. Twice. Symbolizing this can't be changed and it cannot be broken. What was that joint in Exodus 25 that you went to? When he did it the first time, I mean, when he when he actually rewrote it? Oh, that's uh, Exodus 25. Him leaving off and writing and bringing it back to him. Maybe it was Exodus 25, or was it Deuteronomy? It was Deut I did Deuteronomy 10 as well. Let me see if that's the one. But Exodus is definitely in there. Let's see. Oh, Exodus 25:19. All right, get that. Exodus 25:19. What are you talking about? The one which you broke? Okay. Exodus chapter 25 and verse 19. And make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end. Even the mercy seat shall you make the cherubim on the two ends thereof. And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings and their faces shall one look to another toward the mercy seat shall their faces of the cherubim be. I probably ain't what you're looking for though. But Deuteronomy 10. It's definitely talking about the commandments when they was broke. Well, bottom line, he wrote it this time. He didn't give no, even when Moses broke the first tables of stone, did he tell him, hey man, well, you know what they said, go ahead and uh, go ahead and write it back on there. No, he did it himself. So when people lie on the commandments now, it's even worse then. Worse than then. Because you can go to it and show it yourself. When the Pharisees and, the, and, and all of them was out there and they was lying on the Most High line on, they was distorting what he wrote with his finger. So when you say this, like, they can still lie on this one. His word can still be lying on the data by playing with the translation. Which is like always kind of been an unanswered question for me in terms of when I've heard people challenge the today's translation of the story of the Tower of Babel. Like if in fact they replace the name of some other deity and to make it seem like that's the most high there. And I, I've never been like, I guess, like 100% conclusive on that. I've tried to come up with a theory and just make it fit more than how it's written. Wait, well, change the name of... of yeah, like they were saying, um, it's supposed to be some Babylonian uh, person they knew of named uh, Enlil or something like that. Some other, like, uh, mighty one or demigod or something. 
some that was super human, but it wasn't the most high. But to me, it just because it, about the whole thing about confounding, confounding being like confusion, not a most high, not the other confusion. And see, that's another thing right there. You gotta really look up that word in there. Well, confounding. No, confusion in the New Testament. It's not really saying confusing. Because there's other scripts that say he made the word a stumbling block for those that ain't right here. And to me, that's like, don't that mean he's saying that this will confuse them again? And it seems like the most high is tied to a gang confusion sometimes. That's not understanding his law will leave you confused. But when you go to the New Testament, you gotta look that word up, the confusion. It don't say that it says not the author of chaos. Say he's not the author of author of disorder or to, a tumult or commotion. Exactly. So they wrote confusion. Instability. And, that, and that's exactly what I was saying. Wouldn't you be playing with the language? That's directly onto the murder. That's why you gotta have the precepts. But we couldn't have did that though if we was all in the same language, which brings me back to what research have we done linguistically about that part? Because I know how we try to go into Hebrew and make sure. Have we really went into that part to be sure that it's saying what it's now saying? That it was originally saying what it's now saying? Yeah, the Tower of Babel. Because that seems like a, 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 a strong argument that's being posed here. It's worth looking at. The Dead Sea Scrolls. we got brothers who actually can speak this stuff like fluently. And, they, and, that, and that's him there? Exactly. But that word right there, that's what a lot of the cats that try to throw away the New Testament, they, they run to that and say, see, and y'all confounded the languages. And over here it's saying, he not the author of confusion. Not knowing that it's not even saying that confusion. But it's just translated as that. Exactly. He not the author of Unorder and confusion so and chaos. So why y'all think then people wanted us to have different languages if it would allow people to do the same thing that he that he wrote it down for so we couldn't do? But who created who created evil? He did. he did. But who makes it? Who 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 embodies it? Who does it? We do. Man, right? right? So he gave us the blueprint. One thing that can't be changed is the law. You know what I'm saying? Wait, 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 wait. But now he said, but even through the different, bro, you can go through 40 different translations. And if you know his precepts, you won't be deceived. I just told this to a, to a uh, brother I was breaking this stuff down to the other day. He was like, well, I ain't got no King James. I said, man, you can have whatever Bible you want to. And I can show you through the precepts what's right and what's wrong. That's the thing people get caught up on. You know what I'm saying? When you don't know the precepts and you just read it, you're like, oh man, that don't say the same. But if you know the precepts, it's like, wait a minute, that can't be true. Because of this. And because of this. And because of this. So, so he era, gave us the blueprint. You would know, let me look this up because these are the precepts. For example, 2 Kings chapter 22, right? When the king, get, get, get there right quick. Yeah, it's the law. Second Kings twenty two what? Second Kings twenty two. Uh and verse It might be first Kings twenty two. Hold on one second. I'm about to show you an example of that though. First Kings 22 and verse First Kings 22 and verse 1. First Kings 22 and verse 1. First Kings chapter 22 and verse 1. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye, not, know ye that Ramoth Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? Mm -hmm. 
And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am thou, I am as thou, my people as thy people, mm -hmm. my horses as thy horses. So he said, I'm, I'm willing to go with you to battle, right? You want to go and grab the land? My people is your people. But what he wanted to do first? And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray you, at the word of Yahuwah today. I pray you, before we go, let's go and see what Yahuwah say about it. Right? Go ahead. The king of Israel gathered the prophets together. He gathered who? The prophets together. So he gathered the prophets, the people that supposed to actually be getting revelation from Yahuwah. Right? Read. About 400 men mm -hmm. and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, mm -hmm. or shall I forbear? Mm -hmm. And they said, Go up, for the master shall deliver it into your hands of the king. Mm -hmm. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of Elohim, of Yahuwah, besides that we might inquire of him? Who said that? Who, who says, Is there not a prophet of Yahuwah? Is he saying besides you? Like another witness? Is that what you asked him No. No. I'll read it again. Read it again. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of Yahuwah? So he, the dude went to some prophets. Right? 400. He went to. Read it again. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of Yahuwah besides that we might inquire of him? Go ahead. Meaning besides these 400 false right. prophets. Hold that. Go to That's 1 John 4 and 1. Hold that. 1 John 4 and 1. We're going to see why. Don't, don't. We're going to come back to this. But 1 John 4 and 1. Already, like, what's been revealed This is the thing. I see. It's the thing. Hold on. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 1. Verse 1. Beloved. Believe not every spirit. Do what? Believe not every spirit. So he said, don't believe every spirit. Everybody that come to you telling you, do not believe every spirit. Right? So just because just because you see it, some just because you just off off subject, if you see something in the book, don't just believe it just because it said. Now you gotta go and find a precept. You gotta go and get. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get more evidence, right? Go back. So he says, it's 400 people saying, go, 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 go. Right? Go ahead. And Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of Yahuwah? Because remember, when we're dealing with spirits, how many type of angels is it that we know of after today? How many types of angels is it? It's two. The ones that's good, the ones that's evil, right? So you can't believe every one of them. Read. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micah, the son of Amlah, by whom we may inquire of Yahuwah. But I hate him, for he do not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. So he went to the people he knew was going to tell him good. He didn't go to the person he knew was going to tell him the truth. Right? Go ahead. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. Mm -hmm. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micah, the son of Amlah, and the king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat on each of his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. Mm -hmm. And all the prophets prophesied before them. So we got these 400 prophets that told them to go. We read down later. The prophet that they went and, uh, to inquire of after told them, don't go because you're going to die. Right? Drop down to verse 19. Verse 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of Yahuwah. I saw Yahuwah sitting on his throne, and all the host of Shamaim standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And Yahuwah said, Who shall persuade Ahab? that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. And one said to this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit. A what? A spirit. Uh-huh. And stood before Yahuwah and said, I will persuade him. I'm going to persuade him to do it. Right? So now we got 
a spirit that's going down the tail uh, uh, Ahab, yeah, go ahead. Go off the Ramoth Gilead. Go ahead. Do your thing. But he's still going to die. Right? But then you got the prophet Makai that's telling them, if you go up there, you're going to die. So you got two matter of spirits right here. One that's telling them to go and one that's not. Right? You got to figure out who to believe. Right? Don't just go for what sounds good. You got to get facts. Right? Go with numbers. Absolutely. Get uh, John chapter 6 and verse 63. So let's see what we went into the whole spirits thing for. So in order to, to know what you actually supposed to do, you have to go to the law. To what he said, to what he put down. Right? John 6 and what? 63. John chapter 6 and verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It's what that quickeneth? The spirit that quickeneth. Uh huh. The flesh profited nothing. Uh huh. The words that I speak. Then who speak? Mashiach speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. So if he's the, the living Torah, the only way to know the right spirit is to go to, to what? The law. The law. His words. If you don't want to be deceived in any type of way, any type of matter, you have to go back and say, what did he say over here? Exactly. So you can have 30 translations. 40. But if it don't add up with his words, that his words is the real spirits. They like. If it don't add up with his words, it don't, it ain't right. But going into the history on some, you know, it's cool. I just seen one of the dudes, uh, look, the, the white dude who, who smashed out Ricard. He said, uh, he said one thing about the Hebrew Israelites is that they go based off of the scriptures and don't dig into the history of the of the of the book and the words and and when they got here and when they got there and that's their problem. You can't validate it outside of the scriptures. Well, in one aspect, okay, going and doing all of this research, that's cool. All right? But in the other aspect, what do you need to validate the book? You need this law. Either you're going to believe it or you're not going to believe it. The only options you got. When you had to go inquire of the prophet, it was either you're going to believe it or you're not going to believe it. That's it. So, that's okay. I mean, I'm saying like, laws of English How many books of the law you got? Five. So, in order to figure out what's what, you got to, there's still precepts in there. Because one person can look at one spot in Deuteronomy and say, oh, this is how it's supposed to be. But then it's more explained in the book of Exodus. That's a precept. That's two witnesses. You feel what I'm saying? But learning that you, learning the language is definitely important, bro. You got to, going into the language is going to solidify the precepts. It's going to show you like, yeah, that's actually what the precepts meant. You know what I'm saying? So... Precepts is key, though. Key. Real key. Anything else? It's the only way not to be deceived. That's why some stuff I don't even mess with no more that I would have messed with three years ago. Because now when I read it, I see this is actually against the law. I ain't going to go into what I'm talking about. It's a lot of stuff. I can read it right now and say... I used to believe this. It's going against the law. Not okay. Just notice this. All I do is come out of here. That's what you should know. All I do is come out of here with everything. With that, we say shalom. <laughs>